Good evening everyone, time for another silver update. This is the two hour chart of gold provided by netdenia.com. You can click on the link below. Now I've drawn in a few trend lines here. The first trend line is the primary downtrend line which is indicating a price of 1560. That's also the price that we get when we draw a line from this drop-off point that we had with the latest smackdown. The other trend line is this minor flag trend line and the upward trend line on the recovery. You can see we have recovered more than 50% of the smackdown. The same is not the case with silver, but as I've shown before, silver ultimately follows gold. So if we do get a rally out of this, uh, I expect silver to follow. So gold is still rallying from this smackdown now. Everyone pretty much now agrees that this was a central bank coordinated attack against silver and gold. Uh, I'm not really sure which one is the most important. My guess is silver is more important than gold. But nevertheless, it was a coordinated attack by the central banks and the bullion banks to lower the price of gold. And my guess is that it's before an announcement of another round of money printing. Now, we're going to talk about how governments lie. Governments now, especially the United States government, are essentially pathological liars. Whatever they tell you, uh, you can believe the opposite because you can be just about guaranteed that what they're saying is a lie. So I want to prove that to you by looking at some of the recent changes. Now the government has been changing economic indexes for quite some time. They've changed the CPI reading. Of course that's their way of robbing seniors. And they've changed the unemployment. They, they're in the process of changing GDP and we also have this uh, Reinhardt Rogoff, Rogoff Reinhardt controversy and we'll look at that but before we do that let's read a little bit from one of the greatest investors in the history of the world in my mind the greatest investor of our times Jim Rogers this is a man who has made billions of dollars with his own brain not with connections or corrupt uh, bribes etc but just by looking at things and understanding how things work so this is from back in December of 2011, but it pretty much holds true today. In fact, it's even getting worse when we look at these stories. But let's start off and, and look at what Jimmy Rogers has to say. Unemployment and inflation rates are worse than the numbers that hit the news wires suggest because the government is able to tinker with the methodology to sugarcoat how bad the economy really is, says international investor Jim Rogers. Quote, the government lies about the numbers that they put out. Don't take your advice from any government or you are going to go bankrupt, Rogers told Newsmax TV in an exclusive interview when asked if unemployment rates will ever return to pre-recession levels. The official unemployment rate fell to 8.6% in November from 9% in October, not due to strong gains in hiring, but due to a shrinking labor force, as would-be job seekers quit looking for permanent work, the government reports. Even so, the figure is probably much higher, Rogers adds. Quote, they make their unemployment figures look better, but that's because they jiggle the numbers if you use independent sources for unemployment, you will see we have serious problems still despite the government jiggling the numbers. Inflation rates are also misleading, Rogers adds. Officially, the Consumer Price Index rose 3.5% on year in October, according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, although inflation stripped of volatile food and energy prices came to an annualized increase of 2.1%. The Federal Reserve tends to focus heavily on the latter when setting interest rate policies and insists inflation rates are hovering within comfort zones. The government lies about that also, Rogers says. Quote, anybody who buys, who goes shopping, knows that prices are going up. Buy food, education, insurance, just about everything that we buy, prices 
are going higher and the government tells us there's no inflation Roger says and uh, I, I'm not going to continue with that we know we all know that that's true Greg Manorino has covered that so let's look at some of the latest lies that the government is telling and uh, we can see from what they're doing they're getting increasingly desperate the latest one I mentioned recently is this Reinhardt Rogoff controversy and uh, Reinhardt and Rogoff are the ones who did a study about debt to GDP and uh, this is from the New Yorker but you can go to any mainstream source they're all telling the same government lies and as I mentioned before the the media are a captured bunch uh, these are really in essence no better than Pravda under the uh, Soviet collectivist system uh, they're not controlled by gun but they're controlled by money they're they're told what to say and they say what they're told so let's get down to the summary of this argument and uh, he says rather than rehashing all the details of the dispute between Reinhardt and Rogoff and their critics some of which I addressed in an earlier post let's focus on what both sides agree on if you combine data covering dozens of countries collected since World War World War II, the Second World War, you find higher debt to GDP ratios are associated with lower levels of GDP. Now, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure this one out. If the government takes an increasing share of the economy through taxation, we know that the government is wasteful, tremendously wasteful. Their spending does not equal growth as if it were spending in the private sector because the private sector has to show a profit the private sector has to watch costs the private sector is nowhere near nearly as wasteful as government spending is so that's something that a five-year-old can understand according to the paper by three Amherst economists you have to remember this that these economists, whether it's Reinhardt and Rogoff or these other economists, these are all captured people, just like the media. These are people who are paid to lie. That's their job. They lie for a living. Thomas Herndon, Michael Ash, Robert Poland, countries with debt to GDP ratios below 30% grew at an annual rate of 4.2%. Countries with debt to GDP ratios between 30 and 60% grew at an annual rate of 3.2%. That's an interesting finding. It's hardly surprising that Reinhardt and Rogoff have seized upon it to argue that there isn't anything new in the Amherst paper. But wait a minute. Annual growth of 3.2% doesn't sound too bad. Is there a level of indebtedness at which growth ceases to or turns negative. Reinhardt and Rogoff argued that there was and that's what gave their pro-fiscal consolidation message its potency. In the 2010 paper at the center of the dispute they identified the threshold as GDP ratio of 90 percent. Once debt rose above that level they said the average growth rate was negative 0.1 percent. 90% wasn't just any old figure with large budget deficits and debt to GDP ratios in the range of 60 to 80 percent many advanced countries including the United States and Britain were fast approaching the threshold of doom or so it seemed if you took Reinhardt and Rogoff's findings at face value as many people did it was hard to argue with the Hoover Hooveresque logic says Osborne it turns out however that 90 percent threshold is fooey it doesn't exist when the Amherst economists reworked Reinhardt and Rogoff's calculations to take account of programming errors data omissions they came up with fi with a figure of positive 2.2 percent for average growth in countries with a debt to GDP ratio of 90 percent or more that's less than 3.2 percent the figure for countries with debt ratios of 60 to 90 percent but it's not zero or negative and it goes on so this is a silly and stupid controversy we have probably captured economists who are putting out false information and are now exposed by other captured economists 
It's all completely irrelevant. Anybody with a brain in their head knows that as the debt to GDP ratio goes higher, economic growth is going to suffer. So they've used a straw man and they're now going to uh, use that as an excuse to print more money. We know why they're doing that. They're moving us to a more collectivist socialist slash communist economy. And that's very clear when we look at the latest news about the GDP. This is an article from Slate. America is exactly 3% richer than we thought. Good news, Americans, you're about to get richer. Well, not you personally, but you in your capacity as a citizen of the mightiest economic empire the world has ever known. Wow. That's quite a boast. The Commerce Department's Bureau of Economic Analysis is prepared to announce that America's gross domestic product is 3% larger than previously estimated. So why did they say that? Well, we're going to find out. The reason that they say that is because they're going to change the way they calculate this. And remember, people, they've done this before. They did it with discontinuing the M3 money supply. They've done it with rejiggering the, the inflation rates, consumer price index. They've done it by rejiggering the unemployment rate. If you want to see the real statistics, you can go to Shadow Stats, John Williams' site. So they're doing more of the same. Remember that government lies. And the people who run the statistics for the government these people are liars so now they're bringing out their latest lie the main idea is that in an economy that is increasingly depends on the production of intangible goods we need to recognize that the production of ideas is an important form of investment so in the future, the BEA is going to count a company's research and development as a form of investment, just as the purchase of a new office building and the creation of durable work of art, a film, a season of television that can be sold year after year will likewise be treated as a capital investment. These new calculations will also be applied retroactively and thus, like magic, we'll all be richer, or at a minimum, we'll learn that we've been richer all along. So, government liars never change. They always lie, uh, and the reason they lie is because their policies don't work. Their policies are to increase debt, to increase taxes, which ultimately impoverishes a nation, We've seen that from the collapse of the Soviet Union. We've seen that from the failure of Maoism in China. We see that from the failure of uh, Castro in Cuba. And we're seeing it in Argentina. Everywhere collectivism is tried, it fails. But the government now has taken the tack of lying. And of course, the biggest lie of all is the suppression of the metals markets. We know that the government is behind the suppression of the metals markets. Uh, tomorrow is a big day. That's going to be the silver day, May 1st, the smack back attack when people buy physical silver. There's already a tremendous shortage of physical silver because the price that you see on the COMEX is a lie. The price of the COMEX is the government's lie about the price of the precious metals and it's going to be up to the people to expose that lie tomorrow's going to be a big chance and i invite you to join me in stacking more physical silver tomorrow may 1st and we'll talk to you next time